In this video, I'm going to show you how to output a PWM signal from the ARM microcontroller. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. So in Pulse Width Modulation, you need a pulse from 0 volts to some other voltage, let's say 5 volts. And you need a width, and the width specifies the width of the actual pulse, and modulation, meaning that you can change the width of the pulse. The pulse width modulation, the PWM signal, is a way for a digital signal to output a specific voltage other than the specified voltage of a standard digital signal, like 0 to 5 volts or 0 or 3.3 volts. In digital signals, you generally can only have either the 0 volts, which is ground, or the 5 volts, which is the high value. And then within that digital signal, you'll have, say this is a 0 volts and 5 volts, you'll have a threshold in the middle that is considered like the no man's land. So if you have a, a 0 volts, and then you change it to a high, and it doesn't get quite that high, and it maybe it, it comes up to a high because of some physical phenomenon in electronics, and then it finally gets to that high. This portion right here is not considered any signal at all. It's just another state that would not be recognized. And the microcontroller would maybe default to a specific zero or five volts, depending on how the microcontroller operates. But to make a let's say a digital version of a 2.5 volt, you wouldn't be able to do that just with a digital signal. You'd need to be able to pulse the digital signal so it is outputting a 2.5 volts, turning the digital signal on and off very fast. For example, if I was gonna pulse on a line like this, the pulse is equal width as the width of it not pulsing. So if this is a zero to five volts, this would equal 2.5 volts, depending if the, the pulse was fast enough to provide an output that is discernible by a meter or even maybe if you're dimming an LED, it would be fast enough so you wouldn't see the actual flickering. And that's where a couple of the aspects of pulse width modulation come into play. And that is period and duty cycle. I'm going to draw a larger pulse width modulation here. In this pulse, the period is measured from where the pulse begins to where the flat part meets the next pulse. And the duty cycle is the percentage of the width of the pulse in relation to the period. So this would be a 50% duty cycle. Let's take a look at a couple duty cycles. For example, you'd have a 25% duty cycle if the width was 25% of the period. So if each of these graph lines there would be four parts within 100% for 25%. And it would continue this, this way until you've changed the, the width of the pulse. So it would be 5 volts times 0.25, which is 25%. And that would equal 1.25 volts. In the 50% version over here, this would equal 5 volts times 0.5, and that would equal 2.5 volts. Another example would be 0.75, and this would equal 5 volts times 0.75, which is equal to 3.75 volts. And the reason why the voltages equal 
the voltages they do is because this is zero volts, this is five volts. And you'll see like in the 50% example, it is five volts for 50% of the time, time being the period. And then it is zero volts the rest of the time. This being a pulse width modulation signal that's fast enough, you would discern this specific voltage, say on a multimeter or watching a, an LED being dimmed. So five volts would for an LED would be its full brightness. Zero volts would obviously be off or not showing any light at all. And 2.5 volts would be between that. In the 25 volt version, you can see that at five volts, it is only on for 25% of the time. So it's not on for a very long time and it's off most of the time, which is 75% of the time it's off. So it's obvious that the, the 1.25 volts would be closer to the zero volts rather than the five volts. And the same is true with the, with the 75%. It's on more of the time. It's at five volts more of the time than it is at zero volts. So you'd have 3.75 volts of output in this case. So what registers do we have to adjust in the RM microcontroller to achieve a pulse width modulation? The first one is the timer. We're going to use the timer one, the ARR register, which is the auto reload register. That was the one we can specify the maximum number of counts before it went back to zero count. Like if it, when it was in the up counting, it would go from zero to the ARR value and then back to zero and start right all over again. The, it would look like this, counting up to a particular point and then it would stop and start all over again, counting up, go back down, counting up and go back, going back down. The ARR determines the period. And the duty cycle is determined by the, the timer CCR register, which stands for the capture compare register. The one after the CCR actually corresponds to the channel that we'll be using to output the PWM. This is something I actually got wrong while I was testing the programming off camera. So whenever you see me using CCR1, you'll actually need to use the channel that you will select to output your PWM. And just like the ARR register, the auto reload register, the capture compare register is a 16 bit register. And it'll accept a number just like the ARR register will. And you might be able to surmise that since it is or the period is determined by the ARR register, that the period is also dependent on the counter. It's based on the counter, not the actual oscillator that's in the microcontroller. So you have a little bit more control and you can cause the, the period to be relatively long because you can use a prescaler to increase the number of times the oscillator is skipped for every count. Let's take a look at some examples. Let's say that the oscillation or the oscillator, the pulse of the oscillator looks like this. This is the, the base oscillator that's within the microcontroller, not the counter. And you specify that the timer one prescale is equal to two. So right there, you know that the counter is going to be considering this would be zero, one, and two. The count would happen like this. So the count would actually skip what happened on every three oscillations because it's based on a zero based index. Some devices require PWM signals to be relatively slow, like in the servo motors that I demonstrated in the AVR series. And some devices, like laser power supplies, that 
determine the intensity of a laser requires a PWM to be relatively high. Some devices are very loose in their requirements, meaning that you can have a large range between periods, widths of periods. So you can have very slow to very high PWM signals due to its tolerance. And there are some devices that require precise periods for their PWMs because they may actually have circuitry that will measure the PWM to determine a value, especially when that device is an instrument that requires extreme precision and resolution. This type of PWM that I'm demonstrating here is called the edge aligned PWM. Meaning that the period starts at the edge of the PWM signal. You also have center align modes. That was also called phase correct mode in the AVR series, but we'll discuss that in a later video. So where does this PWM output? The, P the timers have channels, as you can see here. You see timer three, channel three, timer one, channel two N, timer three, channel one, Timer 1, channel 2, timer 1, channel 1, timer 1, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. We have a, a timer located at pin 44, which is timer 1, channel 4. 